Well, hey there, all you cool cats and kittens. Welcome to another episode of the Age Groupies Podcast, part of the United We Cast Network. I'm Mike Ergo, and along with my co-host, Lindsay Hyken, we're here to talk to you about all things related to endurance sports from an amateur athlete perspective. We talk about how to have fun along the way and make our sports a little less intimidating. You can follow the show on Instagram at Age Groupies, join our Age Groupies page on Facebook, and look us up by name, Lindsay Hyken and Mike Ergo and Strava. If you have questions, comments, or topic ideas, feel free to email us agegroupies at gmail.com. If you guys like the show, please leave us a rating and review on iTunes or wherever you get your podcast. Today's guest for our show is Robbie Jenkins. Robbie comes up to us from Linden, Utah, and he is the chief marketing officer from Rapid Reboot, a product that I have used for the last, I can't count very well, but I think it's four years since 2017. All right, guys, let's get to the interview. All right, today on our show, we have Robbie from Rapid Reboot. And Robbie, thank you so much, first of all, for being on the show. I really appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedule. And I've been a Rapid Reboot user since 2017, my first Ironman, and I just remember that it has changed how often I can train, how I feel when I train, and allowed me to keep going year after year, injury-free the entire time. And I have a lot of friends who've gotten injured along the way, and it set them back. But I appreciate what Rapid Reboot has done for my life. So Robbie, welcome to the show. Let's dive right in. And why don't you tell us a little bit about how you got involved with Rapid Reboot? Yeah, for sure. So. Um... I I went to BYU uh, here in Utah, even though I'm originally, like I just mentioned, from Atlanta. I went to school here in Utah and then got a job working in Salt Lake for a, a large digital media company, a large uh, digital news media company. Um, and because I, I had some experience in journalism, my, my degree was in public relations. I did a lot of reporting. I covered the 2012 presidential race um, and won some some journalism awards through that um, both on the the university level and also actually the the regional and national level so um, I was kind of in the journalism space uh, a little bit and I, I started working for the digital media company but I was staying active I, I met my wife while I was working in Salt Lake and she at the time while well, I was working with our um, well, are now a business partner because I'm actually, um, my wife and I have an equity stake in Rapid Reboot really because we, we helped get it started. Um, so she was working with David Johnson. Uh, he's our Rapid Reboot CEO, but he's also the, the lead engineer. He's a manufacturing engineer by trade, and he was actually doing a lot of Ironmans. In fact, in 2017, he raced Kona through the Legacy Program. Um, and anyway, so she was working for him uh, on a different um, venture, but he just, he's a little older than us, just being a little older. He he was looking at a lot of the recovery products and one that he came across was obviously Normatec, right? Great product, great company. But he was a little, uh, he has sticker shock like a lot of people do. And oh, yeah. he was wondering like, hey, you know, I, I'm an engineer, I'm a manufacturing engineer. Like, I wonder if I could build this because there just didn't seem to be a lot of competition, right? There wasn't a lot of competition to bring it, the price down. Right. At least the, there wasn't comparable competition, right? As far as quality and performance and all that. So he was wondering, or it, it got him started thinking like what kind of opportunities there would be because again, like, he was really into Ironman. He was getting older and, and needed those types of things. So he recognized the benefit, but he didn't, Again, he didn't um, want to just at the time. I think they were sixteen ninety five just for a pair of boots and a pump. It's insane. Yeah, yeah. So, out of the price range for most people. Yeah, uh, and so he, he started looking at it. My wife was actually a, a collegiate track and field athlete at Grand Canyon University. Uh, she pole vaulted, so she had been you know around sports her whole life and in the locker room and, and, and had seen them, and so. We started doing some research, and I was kind of doing it on the side, uh, right? They they had a little more more time, um, so they Dave started talking to factories about about parts and components, and really started seeing like you know what what what's in it, what does it need to do, 
Um, that opened a Pandora's box of FDA regulations because it's actually a medically regulated device. Oh, wow. So more hoops to jump through. Yeah. Lots of hoops to jump through. So we have to register with the FDA every year. Um, anytime we want to launch a new product, you, you basically have to submit an application that goes through, I mean, design files, tests. Um, we have to do independent lab tests. We have to do usability tests, um, to basically prove, um, that it works. People can use it, you know, efficiency, efficacy, you know, just all these, these things. Uh, you have to basically right. prove that it's safe to use and, and effective. So um, we had to go through all that. You have to have all these these certifications. And um, so anyway, we we started doing that because it, it it was definitely hard, right? I mean, at first it almost dissuaded us just because wow, this is going to take a lot more time and effort than just making a product and start selling it. Like we can't just sell it the minute yeah. it lands here if we don't have our ducks in a row. Um, but anyway, my wife is very process oriented. She's very good. So she really took that on. I helped her. Um, I took on a lot of the marketing side of things. Um, so we really made a good team. You had Dave working really on the product itself. Um, my wife was really setting up the business the processes, documentation, the whole organization, uh, handling events, sales she uh, actually graduated in web and graphic design so she built the website uh, and i really took on a lot of the messaging trying to get some exposure through working with athletes right um, really creating that brand and brand identity so we really made a good team as far as being a small team at the very onset and so in 2016 um, right before we launched and started selling i quit my job i was like i I need to work on this full time because we, we felt the opportunity was there and it was fun. It was fun building. Yeah. It's a big jump. Yeah. It was, it was a pretty big jump, but I mean, at the time we didn't have any kids. So for my wife and I to, to go all in, it wasn't, didn't seem that risky at right. first. Um, and, and we bootstrapped it too. So, uh, we've been bootstrapping this. And so we didn't have that a lot of like the, I guess the liability, the risk, um, as much, uh, so, you know, as people who might go up and get, you know, give up a ton of the company. So anyway, we, we just went for it and, and it's been a fun ride. We've grown. Um, we, we went from Dave's house to now I have a, a large office uh, with a big warehouse and, and several stories of, of office space uh, and several dozen employees. So that's been cool. So we've been able to hand off doing all the events because initially we were doing all the events and taking customer service calls and, you know, doing all the quality assurance and, and inventory management and stuff like that. But, um, it's allowed us to work on the business and not in the business, which is really cool because we get to push it forward and we have, we have a lot of cool things in the works. We really do. So that, that's exciting. Yeah. Well, I'm excited about that. I was, I was excited to try out the, the newest thing you had is the, the arms attachment as a triathlete, primarily legs, but obviously with swimming and some of the strength work. And now every time I run uh, in a race, I'm carrying a flag. So there's a lot more arm work involved with that. But, uh, that thing was awesome. Um, but for those who are unfamiliar of how it works, could you walk us through, you know, basically how these, uh, this dynamic compression boot system works? Yeah, so it's, uh, in principle, it's, it's fairly straightforward. So it uses dynamic compression. So moving, it's compression that moves. So unlike static compression, that would be your compression socks, it, it uses mechanical compression. And it's, it's distal to proximal, what's described as distal to proximal. And that means it starts from your extremities and works towards your core. And... Decades ago, these started off in the medical field to treat lymphedema. So people would have lymphatic fluid pooling in their extremities um, because of their lymphatic system was damaged. Uh, the lymphatic system doesn't have a pump like the circulatory system does. Your heart helps pump blood throughout right. your body. The lymphatic system doesn't have that. It relies on muscle contractions. And so anytime those muscles are damaged uh, or, or that system is um, or the system itself is damaged, you're going to have lymphedema to varying, varying degrees. And so 
the idea was really simple and just compress different sections sequentially towards the core, help flush that fluid through the nodes. So your body can kind of filter it out. And it, your lymphatic system is really integral in your immune system, right? Which is really important for healing and recovery is an important part of healing. So it wasn't, it probably wasn't until the early 2000s that, uh, and, and Norma Tech, to their credit, really helped bridge this gap that products like this started coming from the medical space to the sports medicine space um, or the athletic space. So you had you started having physical therapists using it more for athletic recovery. And then it's it's really just transitioned into something that that everybody really has has access to. Yeah. So I'm, I'm in the triathlon space and I'm, I'm doing swim, bike, run. Where else are we finding it? You're talking about pro sports teams. You're talking about running. You're talking about cyclists. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, any and every sport. And that's something that we really focused on early was showcasing the diversity of it. Right. And just as an all purpose recovery tool for anything athletic. Um, as far as the events go, we do a lot of the Ironman triathlons. We do a lot of marathons. Uh, but we've gotten more in, into weightlifting. I mentioned that we we are an official sponsor of weightlifting. We're an official sponsor of USA Climbing. We really, really wanted to showcase the, the arm attachments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because a lot, a lot of time went into the, the hip and arm attachments, especially to make those unique other than anything out there right now and, and to make them as effective uh, as possible. So my favorite is actually the hip attachment. And a lot of weightlifters, a lot of crossfitters like that. But then you have your traditional sports. Uh, you'd be hard pressed to find any locker room on the collegiate or the uh, pro level that doesn't have these. And we're talking any sport, hockey, lacrosse, baseball, yeah. soccer, basketball, football. I mean, all those sports are going to have these, you know, whether they just have the boots or they have the, the gamut of the boots, hips and arms. So. Well, I definitely will throw in the hip attachment a lot more when I'm doing my heavy lifting, like in the, in the winter. And I seem to feel it. Uh, I get a good feeling like right in my hip flexors. Mm -hmm. uh, it seems like it's those spots you can't really reach uh, with a lot of other tools out there. Mm -hmm. That that's actually my problem area. Uh, so it's it's my hip flexors and my back because I mentioned I'm only five eight, but I I'm fairly stocky. I've always been kind of tightly tightly bound, uh, and so like I've always had some flexibility issues. I worked on it over the years, but honestly, nothing has helped me as much. And maybe it is because I'm getting older, and I I think I I notice it more. But nothing helps me more than using the boots and the hips before a workout uh, in my problem areas, like my lower back. I have a longer torso, even though I'm shorter. So uh, yeah, the, the hip flexors and the lower back, they've always been a problem for me. And I've never been admittedly good at foam rolling or, or stretching, uh, even though I, I have worked on them uh, as I've gotten older. But yeah, like throwing on the boots. Uh, so we have a gym here in the office, which is really nice because you know, employees can use it. Um, and so for a lunch break, I go down and work out, right? Well, if I'm sitting at my desk, I can throw, throw the boots on or, or we have a, a recovery center set up down there. So you can sit in the chairs and you can use, use the equipment before and after if you'd like. Um, I, I actually like it as a warm up tool, I guess is what I'm getting at. Just as much as I love it as a, as a post-workout recovery tool because because of those mobility issues and the flexibility side of things. I just feel more loose, we're more prepared, feel lighter, right? Because it's gotten that circulation going. And then obviously you hop in them afterwards and you're gonna mitigate that soreness and stiffness the next day. Yeah, so I, I've always used, I mean, if you're looking at it, there's the A mode and B mode. Um, and I've used the B mode to uh, have it dynamically compress in stages all the way up from, what is it, distal to proximal, you said? Yeah, distal to proximal. Um, so what's a, what way should I be using it or should be my listeners be using it before a workout? Um, so I like A-mode before a workout. Just, uh, in, in fact, I, I tend to switch it up kind of halfway through. I'll be on A-mode and then go to B-mode. Um, 
and it was just a little less aggressive. It's more of just a, a regional type of a warm up. It, because it's, it's going to vacate the blood in a certain area and the, the lymph fluid, but then when it releases, it lets it flow back in. So it's not flushing out the fluid uh, as much. Um, because really the, the flushing is to get a lot of the, the toxic uh, byproducts of metabolism, you know, lactic acid, you have other uh, metabolites that, that build up in, in the muscle fibers from exertion. And B-mode is great for flushing that out just getting it out vacating it um before workout you don't need that as much right so a mode is is less aggressive but it's it's more of like a, a targeted regional um squeeze release right per per region so i'll do that and then i'll use b mode just because one thing that i really like with b mode on the higher pressures is there's an element of traction um that you've probably noticed, right? And you bump up the pressure a little bit. Um, and it really, because it's holding the entire attachment, it really starts stretching things out. So I'm not using it so much for the flush before workout, but really to start getting some of that, that traction. Um, and, and, and really, when it, when it comes to rapid reboot, when we were doing a lot of the research, um, you know, talking about how we were going to build it and how, how do we make it, a little different right like what are the opportunities here we started talking to a lot of people uh, who had used Nolantech and others for years and one thing that kept coming up with the higher pressures i just wish it squeezed more they, they sell them as a massage tool but i don't feel like it's really massaging like yeah it's circulating blood but it's not really squeezing my muscles it's not really giving me what, what i want i just wanted to squeeze a little tighter um, and we doing the research talking to specialists we realized there really was an opportunity to offer more compression. Um, the catch was we had to cycle through much faster so that we weren't holding higher compression for longer uh, because then it would have adverse side effects, right? If you, I mean, if you're holding 200 mmHg for four minutes, which is about the cycle time of, of the normal tech system, yeah, you're, you're getting occlusion, you're not getting enhanced circulation. so. Um, we needed to increase the performance of the, the compressor uh, at the heart of the device. Um, and, and when we did that, we, it was kind of like that, oh yeah, like th this, this is going to give everyone, you know, there's that range. You don't have to go up higher in pressure, but there have been some really, really cool things from it. One, um, we feel like it, it, it's more efficient because um, you're getting more cycles within a set amount of time. You can bump up the pressure which means that you're really going to get more of that myofascial release in the muscles, right? It's, it's basically just, oh, man. Squeeze I'm a fan of yeah. that. Right. Yeah. I love that tight squeeze. I, I, I bump it all, all the way up every single time, except for the hips. I got to bring that down just a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's same. Um, but I, yeah. I love that tight squeeze on my thighs. Like it just, um, you know, whether it's just, re it feels good because it's really, releasing endorphins and it's releasing that muscle tension like it's 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 awesome right um so th there was that that side of things that we wanted it to offer you know your traditional blood circulation and lymphatic circulation those things um but then we wanted to offer the, the muscle tension release right it just needed to squeeze tighter to do that um but then another um really awesome benefit that comes from it is, is the element of traction right like it's squeezing tighter especially on b mode it's, it's just going to pull the joints apart a little bit um relieve some of that tension there uh, so a lot, a lot of people pointed out like, oh, i feel like it's it's really stretching me out it feels awesome <laughs> yeah that's you, you go to a chiropractor and they're going to be implementing elements of traction across your body right so yeah it, it makes sense Oh, it makes a lot of sense. So you said there's some new things coming out soon. Are those still uh, in-house secrets or is there any teasers you can give us? Um, yeah, they're still in-house secrets just because like, we don't want to speak too early. We have to go through the whole FDA process. But um, yeah, so there's no, there's no timeline. But we, let's just say that when we launched our, our first product, it was all about performance. So we went right back to the drawing board and we've had something we're, we're going to have some uh, industry firsts, a lot of industry firsts. 
So, ah, oh, man, I cannot wait. So. Well, w- let me tell you one thing that I really, what set you guys apart from the competition is just the people too. I mean, the product speaks for itself. I used it. I felt great. Um, in fact, I kept going back multiple times for my first full Ironman just because the, you know, most of us are nervous Nellies before our first one. Mm-hmm. So it, just going back, check things out, make sure I had everything. Got in a rapid reboot session every single time and uh, at the expo. But your people, you, the people you hire and you have on staff were just so personable that I'm a relational ty- type of person. So that made the difference for me in terms of the competition because just the, they remembered me. They were kind, just really outgoing. So you got an awesome team. We really do. We've, we've been incredibly blessed. Um and that, that's a cool thing too, growing it from the ground up, right? So you get to, you get to pick who you work with, right? Um, mm-hmm. and, and there have been, there have been an incredible people who we've interviewed for positions, and on paper they're perfect, um, but just because of people we had existing, right? Like we we've always been conscientious of the team and the team dynamic. Because these are people that are yeah. going to, you know, if they're out on events, they got to be with each other for, you know, if it's Kona, they're with each other for a week in a house, right? And you want... Yeah, tight space, want, yeah. Yeah, and, and from the very beginning, one of the messages that I wanted to convey on the opportunities I felt in the industry that some of the competitors weren't doing was that sense of team. Um, so from the very beginning, it's been, you know, like if, you, if you're with Rapper, you're part of our team. And then if you're obviously working for the company, we want you to be a team. So we, we have incredible people. Um, we've, we've given a lot of responsibilities to some, some younger people and said, Hey, um, you know, as a, as opposed to maybe someone who on paper, like I said, was a little, might've been more suited and more experienced in the role. We wanted someone yeah. who was a little more go getter, you know, just to add to that vibe of, of rapid reboot and it's, it's pay dividends. Um, so it's, it's been really cool to build it. And there are some people here who are, hundred percent rap reboot and, um, dedicated just beyond belief. So it's, it's cool. I mean, we have a, a great team that's highly capable, but then we have a, a, we have people who are incredibly passionate about our, our vision, not just the product that we have now, right. And, and selling it and, and growing, but taking that and you, turning that into a five, 10, 15 year plan for rapid reboot. It's, it's cool. Well, I really believe that between rapid reboot and my yoga sessions each week, that it's kept me injury free for the last, you know, four years. So it's a, it's a good feeling. And I'm, I'm glad to see, especially companies like rapid reboot really creating this industry of, of wellness within the sports community. It's not just the game. It's, it's the lifestyle that lets us keep going on this. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I think there's an opportunity. Recovery, it's become a buzzword. Um, And I think rightfully so, right? There are a lot of products out there that are getting commoditized. and There are a lot of people getting into the space. And, you know, from from the business side of things, it's like, "Ah, you know, you don't don't want it getting so muddy, but at the same time, it's like, all right, yeah, let's push push this message of recovery is important. Um, and, And we can, I mean, we're seeing athletes nowadays do things that have never been done because they've invested so highly in their, in their bodies and and their, their wellness. Right. So I think that that's a model for, I mean, we have Tom Brady who's going to play until he's probably 45. Right. I mean, you have LeBron James. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. I said he's spent more than a million dollars a year on, on his body and then staying healthy. And I think that's, I think that's a good model for people, you know, you don't have to invest millions like he does, right? You know, you might not even need to invest thousands. Um, but if you get the right pieces, the pieces that work for you, you can stay injury free. You can continue your active lifestyle and you can just enjoy a better life all around. It's, it's really cool to get emails from people um, who say we've changed their life, right? Because yeah, there's the side of things like this is going to make you feel better so you can get back to training. But then there are people who actually have issues or are coming back from an injury. And uh, this was a game changer. Like there, there, I don't, I don't feel like I could have come back to where I was before or even get better if, you know, if it weren't for rapid reboot. So oh, yeah. it's cool to get emails like that and to hear uh, your story as well. 
Well, yeah, and I'll give you one right now because, I mean, I, I'm not the only one, but there's a lot of us through uh, who sports or endurance sports meet a certain mental health need that we have. And for me to be able to stay in endurance sports, I, I have to invest in recovery a lot. So because of what you guys have put out, it's helped me to continue to connect with families of fallen military, carry the flag for them, and do this, you know, uh, year after year. And whereas, you know, I, I see a lot of people getting hurt and maybe they'll put together a good season, but after that, their body just can't recover because they, they're, they're burnt out. And it takes, it takes not just a few months, sometimes years to recover from, you know, the damage they've done. So I really appreciate it. Yeah. Well, you're welcome. Um, that it, it makes me think of, uh, Ben Hoffman, who's one of our athletes, uh, yeah. had a chance well, I look oh, last year to go out to Tucson. So I flew out to Tucson and had a team and we put together some content, right? That was really the purpose of it, but it was really eye opening to see, you know, how, how this and, and other things that he does, right? Cause it's it involved recovery and, and just health and wellness involve a lot of things, the right? Nutrition, the right sleep. Uh, but he gave us some awesome insight into uh, behind the scenes of what it takes to compete at that level. And, and he said, if you look at all the top athletes uh, in triathlon, uh, specifically, you know, the mileage is really similar, right? The, the hours that they're putting in training are going to be virtually the same, right? So what's going to start separating those athletes? Well, it's the little things that they do. It's going to be who's, who's dedicated to getting sleep every night, right? Who's dedicated to eating well every night. Who's dedicated to using compression modalities um, and, and other recovery type modalities and something that he added to that, that I found interesting. I hadn't really thought about before. You know, he's, he's out while, while we were there, he went on like a 10 hour bike ride, but then he came back and he was in the booths. We were in his house and like he was there with his wife and they were talking about how him getting in the booths as part of his recovery regimen allows him to be there at home. Um, gives him that time. Yes. Kind of mentally reset. He's not doing. He's not doing anything necessarily, but he's still getting the benefit. He, he's he gets to sit there recover. He doesn't have to be you know rolling out or you know doing anything else. He can just focus on being with his wife now. His his uh, his daughter. Um, so I, I thought that was really interesting. It's just it's time every day that he gets to spend where he's he gets to keep progressing getting better because he's recovering but he's actually not having to do anything except sit there yeah that's a that's i mean now that you say it that's a huge part of my process too because you're right as opposed to other modalities where like uh i don't know cryotherapy or things that you'd be outside of the house or actively stretching mm -hmm. i mean i can put my full attention on my kids when i'm sitting there in my boots mm -hmm. uh so that's you're right. That's a really cool thing. It's a win-win. Yeah. It's, it's the most active passive recovery, right? Or the most passive active, recovery. <laughs> however you want to say it, probably the most passive active recovery that you can do because you're completely passive only once you get set up, but it's actively, right. It's, it's cycling through, it's, it's giving you yeah. all those, those benefits, but you get the, the added benefit of being able to sit there and mentally reboot or mentally connect to, to those around you. So for my listeners out there, what should they start with? I mean, uh, you, obviously you got the arms, legs, and, and uh, hips. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, it definitely depends. The, the boots are the most popular, and I, I think boots are going to give you – I mean, there, there's not a sport out there really that doesn't involve your legs, right? So um, definitely the boots would be what we consider our starter package or what we call our standard system. So I would definitely start with those. Um and then I'm, again, I'm a little biased towards the hips just because they give me probably yeah, yeah. The, the greatest benefit out of anything. Um, so yeah, boots and boots and hips. Um, we, we built in discounts instead of structuring it, uh, in a way that every time you, you add an attachment attachment, it just takes the price of that attachment and adds it to the package price. We built it in so that the complete package actually has a has a built-in discount. Um, so oh, very cool. I mean, if you're buying the boots and hips, it's really not that much more to throw in the arms. Um, 
but for some people to, you know, to stay under a thousand dollars right there, um, I would definitely recommend going, going with the boots and then you can always add attachments later. Uh, our, our customer service team, and that was another thing from the very beginning. We wanted to just, we knew that as a young company, we weren't going to get it right. Um, you know, that there were going to be things that, that cropped up. So we, and we didn't even know what they were at the time. Right. Um, but we just said, no matter what, we want to take care of people. We want to have good customer service because we're building something long term. Um, so, I mean, because because if there's a quality issue or if there's you know, you know like a bad batch or anything like that, like you can work through those, but you can't. It's harder to come back from a bad reputation. Um, so, that's anyway, customer service is true. awesome. I guess that's my plug for customer service. Um, you can always you can always reach out to them and add attachments super easily. Um, if you, if you're amazed at how well the boots work and you're like, okay, yeah, I, I, am thinking this same thing on my hips or my arms would be awesome. Then you can always add those later. No problem. Very cool. Well, thank you for taking the time today and, uh, tell the team I said, thank you and hello. And, uh, and also congratulations on, I hear you got a new baby. I, yeah, I do. So, uh, got baby number two in two years. <laughs> so, and, uh, wow. Uh, actually out of Kona 2017, my, uh, my wife and I were out there and she was pregnant. Um, so we had our first January, 2018 and then we just, just had our, our second. So yeah, it's that, cha- that changes things. That makes it a little harder to travel. I, I love traveling. Uh, yeah. So it's, but I, I, I love, I love my little girls. So I, I wouldn't trade it for the world. I hear you, man. We're in the same boat. I got two little ones myself. So yeah. Robbie, thank you. I appreciate it. Everyone make sure to check out rapid reboot. We'll have all the links in the show notes down below and until next time, we'll see you guys later. Awesome. Thanks, Mike. All righty. That concludes today's episode of the age groupies podcast with me, Lindsay Hyken and my co-host Mike Ergo. We really hope you enjoyed it. You can follow the show on Instagram at Age Groupies, join our Age Groupies page on Facebook, and look us up by name, Lindsay Hyken and Mike Ergo on Strava. If you have questions, comments, or topic ideas, feel free to email us at agegroupies at gmail.com. If you enjoy the show, please leave a rating and review on iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts, as this really helps us get more exposure while we try to grow this little venture. And of course, if you have friends you think might like the show, please be sure to share it with them. But for now, thanks for listening and we will talk to you next week.